my body said listen this girl is not going to take any decision let us do the bit for her my husband or going to be husband ran away and there is no right and wrong we were two right people you know mm. who were trying to make a might and do you have any advice for people who might be like going through a rough phase in their relationship hello and welcome to love handle a series where we get unfiltered about love and relationships Uh, at Verona, we believe that we need to represent different kinds of relationship. And while successful relationships teach us so much, the ones that don't work also provide us with a different perspective. Today, we have our guest with us, Kushbu. Thank you for joining us. So, a little background about Kushbu: She got married at 22, but after two years of being married, things didn't really work out, and she got divorced at 25. But she gave love another chance, and now she's in a very loving and fulfilling marriage. So, hello, Kushbu. Welcome to. Love handle. Thank you. So, Kushbu, talking about your first marriage, what were some of the insights that you got from? It? Um, I think the first thing was that I was not listening to myself. You know, when we don't communicate mm -hmm. to the extent that uh, just how love is expressed, not through words, sometimes by uh, shaking hands, by cuddles, by holding hands. That's how you also express frustration, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes. those leave scars way beyond you know what you can physically see right i think my mind was so involved in covering up for the stories of those wounds and you know those scars and those unexplained injuries that i think i stopped listening to my heart at that time and i was in denial i wanted you know the society to know that okay everything is okay everything is fine hmm. and sometimes in that process even things that are not normal are explained and accepted to be as a you know normal that like, oh you know what there was a fight in the marriage that happens everywhere come on that's fine but that's not fine right and i wanted myself accepting that it's normal mm -hmm. and uh, i can come out of it yeah so was it was there like a moment when it was like okay this is over or was it just like something that grew over time you know this is funny i think i was so much in denial mm -hmm. that i think my body said listen this girl is not going to take any decision let us do the bit for her mm -hmm. I realized that um, I had a lot of medical conditions because of that. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, you know, hospitalized, and uh, my doctors and my reports did the work for me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when that happened, I realized, oh, now I know. I had unexplained fevers. I used to panic a lot. Let's just say I was a combination of Ross and Gunther together, mm -hmm. right? And that was something that was not going well. That's when I realized that this wasn't. me and i need to step up but you know then you come out of it in different ways that you want you mm. talk about i think that is something that gives you strength when you realize when you accept that gives you strength that okay mm. listen this is where we are let's talk about that and even after you decided okay this is not working like india as a country you know divorce is a taboo was the decision difficult for you to actually separate and then get you know a divorce it was very very difficult to explain mm. families to yeah. start with it was very difficult coming from a family where my parents still hold hands when they go out for a walk for them to accept that this is not working out it wasn't easy however they saw how it was affecting me and i think in the larger scheme of things they felt it is so much better to have a daughter who is healthy happy than one who is just married so i wish who you gave love a second chance how was that journey for you i don't think i gave love a second chance it's like you know a child who's craving for a candy mm -hmm. and he's sad because he didn't get one mm -hmm. now gets that candy i was that uh, but again having said that it wasn't just love from a particular person mm -hmm. you know we've all seen that journey where we grow up and our parents are there for me i saw my parents taking care of me as a baby when i was 25 i was struggling right i saw love there I saw love in friends who came forward helped me like I was a child learning how to walk. So I was open to love and it came from all sides and everyone. I think it's so important to have the support system. Absolutely, absolutely. So your current husband, how did you meet him? Okay, this is also very interesting. You know, I was done meeting people through my family mm -hmm. who liked me or wanted to meet me because I was so and so's daughter mm -hmm. or who probably shared a cookie with me when I was 3 years old and wanted to laugh on the same joke again and again. I genuinely wanted to meet somebody who knew me through me and you know knew me through a story I told them. Mm -hmm. So I took to uh, you know a dating platform. Mm -hmm. It was an online uh, platform, and I remember clearly my husband. His profile said, "Do you want a party?" And yeah. at that point, mine said, "Rum and raisin cookies are the reason I don't trust people mm -hmm. because they look like chocolate chip cookies." And uh, we you know instantly started uh, talking. 
mm-hmm. and uh, that's how i actually decided to you know venture into the territory again mm-hmm. what did you do differently in this marriage i think i was my worst best the first time i met my now husband was in a track suit mm-hmm. and we spoke about which momo stall was better than the other we debated about that yeah. we spoke about things like casual banter on things that didn't matter mm-hmm. that were not of any sort of political or strategic importance to anybody but i realized that's what uh, brought us together i was my messy best i'm an amazing chef but i'm the messiest and i ensured the kitchen was always uh, dirty when i left as if a storm had just come by but uh, my back then boyfriend now husband saw it and decided that okay this is the mess i have to live within but here we are a yeah. messy couple mm-hmm. so you didn't really try to like portray a different picture or try to be your best self just to like impress somebody you know we didn't want to marry mm-hmm. like when we met i had tasted the marriage you know uh, experience and for him he said you know no how like why mm-hmm. and we didn't we never met with the intention to get married i think it was over the time that we became such best friends i mean i don't know any sharukh khan fans here but pyar dosti hai right mm-hmm. so we met and we figured out look if we don't get married there is a potential that either of us are going to get married to someone else so before mm-hmm. that happens let's just block the person and we just blocked each other and i think right now we just blocked for each other and like how did things change from being friends to being married okay this is interesting again first meeting track suit after yeah. that we were in a long distance you mm-hmm. know because we are a calendar couple we still are mm-hmm. um so, so we what block, do you mean by calendar being a calendar so we block couple. each other's calendars because oh, okay. we are in a long distance relationship mm-hmm. even now he works in dubai i am here mm-hmm. and we block each other's calendars for important things even if they are not important and i know he's coming here maybe for one day um mm-hmm. i would try to make that day as important as special it can be sometimes yeah. it's so confusing because both of us want to make it special Mm-hmm. and the speciality of the specialness of the special day because both are trying is really not special but well i remember i used to go to the airport every time he used to come mm-hmm. to a point that if i didn't go and i wasn't standing at that spot mm-hmm. it wasn't a surprise for him it was a shock for him yeah and i remember making uh, calls only because i wanted to see him work that's it like i there were times i would be so low i said i know uh, you're working i just want to see you and there were hours i would just see him and i would be working he would be working mm-hmm. i think the time we realized that this is it for us this was one sunday i was busy with some work and he messaged me look sundays i work i'm not a let's have a weekend person mm-hmm. i took out 4 hours for you and i need those 4 hours and for me i think that's when you know i fell in love with him i was like okay this man loves his work i love my work we are both a workaholic couple and we realized that if he's so passionate about something uh, like his work i know how much he's going to invest in this relationship mm-hmm. for him it was very different it was very gradual he said for me it was a glass it was like a jar every time i met you every time you know we interacted there was something new i discovered about you and it was filling up like 25% was filling up mm-hmm. and the moment it was 100 i knew it yeah but there was no proposal he didn't propose to me okay yeah there Tell was no more proposal about that. there was no proposal he didn't propose to me he in fact proposed to my dad oh <laughs> yes he proposed to my dad He yeah. said, uh, "Look, I really, really love your daughter, mm-hmm. but because of the experiences she had, probably she doesn't want to marry again. But I know, like, if I don't have her, she is going to be taken. So mm-hmm. I need your blessings." And my dad came to me one evening. He's like, "Listen, that friend of yours, he wants to marry you." But did you know that already that he 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 wants to marry you? Well, we had discussed marriages. Yeah. but that was a joke in the sense that we would laugh at people who were getting married okay we would talk funnily about like i remember going for dates and we used to have this game where we used to look at people and be like oh see that couple they're just ordering they're just eating that means they're married but look at that couple they're still talking that means they're not married we used mm-hmm. to do that and then i remember sitting down with him one day after my dad broke the news to me and i said listen do you want to be that couple who's just ordering food and eating and he said babe i'm marrying you i don't think i'm ever going to be that so you know let's just put a ring on it i think it's just a myth that marriage kills romance like if you're suited for each other and if your values and interests everything matches i think romance just never goes away sometimes even if they don't match it's the best match i mean i have learned so much about how a road can be constructed how many beams are there 
in a particular construction site or when there is a scaffolding because he is a civil engineer and he loves to talk about his work when it comes to my work he has learned so much and there are times that i don't think i'm interested in really knowing the material or the cement i think i just love watching him talk mm. right and the same he says the passion with which you talk about your work and i think we fell in love with that and we still do there are times you know given that his work revolves around a lot of travel mm. there are times we are in locations we just cannot talk and i know i have just those 15 minutes that he's going to call me in those 15 minutes mm. for me my life stops for those 15 minutes mm. you know and i i want to give it my best that time and then every time he is back till date we are Four years into our marriage, it's an event. It's a carnival for me. I want to do up the house in the best way possible. I want to ensure my dog is wearing new clothes. I want to ensure I cook the best meal. I want to invite all my friends over. I want my family to create like a gala dinner. I mean, for me, it's an event. Yeah. And uh, long distance. I mean, credit goes to long distance for that. So you feel long distance has really helped you in like, keeping that spark alive in the relationship. Absolutely. So I'd rather have twenty four hours of quality time with him than two hours each day, knowing he has calls or he's disturbed because of something. I remember uh, there were days I wasn't well, and he would just fly down for twelve hours. He would take a morning flight, be there, and we did nothing. There was silence. We would just sit, look at each other, start laughing because it was so funny that we weren't talking, mm-hmm. and then. That's it. There were times I remember between flights, I only went and met him at the airport so we could sit together. Till date, even when you know we are married, there are times we both have our laptops. We are both working, but we're just sitting next to each other, and that gives so much comfort to me and to him, just knowing that we are there. Kushbu, let's talk about the wedding. How was the wedding? There was no wedding. There was a function. There was a party. Like till date. my husband uh-huh. calls it oh that party we had and i would tell him that was our wedding yeah. but we went to the court because we wanted to first register mm-hmm. and then have a function mm-hmm. but when we reached the court we thought it would take time you know um uh, it would take a month but for the first time we realized when we went to the court with the same religion and we could get married mm-hmm. um you know easily the very same day mm-hmm. and we got married and we just called home and told them yeah. so it was really a party we called in our families and uh, you know uh, our friends and we danced and it was a celebration of sorts mm-hmm. but yes i do want to i have a dream that i mean i complete 5 years uh, next year mm-hmm. i want to have uh, i want to renew my vows i want to have something of a sort of celebration to kind of celebrate that occasion mm-hmm. Did you have a checklist while you were like thinking of getting married and did it change after your divorce or did it or were there a few things that you felt were not very important but then it they seemed like really important in your relationship you know it's a human tendency mm-hmm. what we sometimes do is you try to you know plug in things that you could not find in your previous relationship mm-hmm. right however in doing that we forget that he was a different person and this yeah. is a different person There was no checklist ever. Again, mm-hmm. as I said, I wasn't even expecting this to happen. Mm-hmm. But I knew one thing that I need someone to love me at my worst. Mm-hmm. Because I know everyone's going to be there at my best. You know that scene from Interstellar where Matthew comes back and his own daughter is almost the age of his grandmother, mm-hmm. right? Talking to him so wisely. That phase when I came out of my first relationship, everyone around me, people younger than me, people who've never been married, everyone turned to me as an advisor telling me, oh, you know, it didn't last because you, you know, didn't do this or this didn't happen or that didn't happen. Mm-hmm. But I realized it's not anything external. It's me. I knew the red flags. Mm-hmm. I was just delaying it by and not accepting them. I had to raise that flag. I had to be honest to myself and I had to love myself. Mm. You know I should not have been okay with someone not treating me the way I was being treated right and there is no right and wrong we were two right people you mm. know who were trying to make a might but well it didn't happen right mm. we should have realized that sooner so that we could have avoided the harm that happened but this time around I was sure that I want to be very realistic mm. and I want to be absolutely open to letting someone know look I come in this new relationship I come with a lot of medical history I come with a lot of emotional issues. I do come with a baggage. Are you okay with that person, right? And when I got that reciprocation, mm. I think it worked out. So was it his second marriage or it was the first time he was getting married? 
so while he was a first timer at marriage but i think he was way smarter and wiser you uh-huh. know he once told me you don't marry because you have to marry mm-hmm. you marry because you want to spend your life with someone you love mm-hmm. and he said lucky for you i haven't found that person yet mm-hmm. and uh, you know we're going to do it together but given that i had done it once i thought i was going to be the smarter one telling him you know i mean that's not how marriage works it's not like dating it's very different mm-hmm. you don't know but then he just told me nothing changes except for the fact that we legally stay together mm-hmm. and that our names would probably be printed together mm-hmm. and uh, i would officially be invited at all your family gatherings just like you would be for mine and god that man is so true like till date nothing has changed but i know that he is very empathetic in terms of there are times you're watching something on the television and he knows that moment i get transported back mm-hmm. he knows how to bring me back and i think that's what you know makes me feel that even though he had not experienced marriage before i think he was way wiser in terms of understanding how emotions work mm-hmm. so since you mentioned your interests are very different do you have some core values that you share yes value one really is to take chances to mm. take the leap of faith and i think that's where this relationship is based out of he took that chance with someone who was so scarred and who was so wounded mm. i took a chance with someone who was such a free nomad mm. and we were afraid initially to try new things but together you know we do that secondly of course we realize time commitment in a relationship is very very important mm. right long distance might just be one angle of it but even when you're there how do you make every moment count so that's one thing that we keep very very close to our relationship and we work constantly on that third thing is not just respecting each other but also our families he's very close to my family i love the way he gets along with everybody in my family he goes out of his way to do things for them his family hasn't completely accepted me but his family loves the fact that i respect their values their traditions and even if it is from the distance but i'm always there i'm always around as a pillar for the family so these are things that together we've agreed upon that we work and constantly strive to make better for us mm-hmm. so you just talked about his family not accepting you how was the situation when you broke the news to them how did they react there was no reaction there was radio silence mm-hmm. and uh, i remember we decided we'll go to the court and uh, we we'll finally you know make it official he called up his family his brother said we'll come down don't worry mm-hmm. and it was a navratri day i remember and my mother said it's navratri it's a very good day just go your registration will happen when we were there and we realized that we could get married we rang back home and both our fam- my family was elated and they just said just do it and uh, his mother said well do it i just said that you ran away and did it uh but yeah my blessings and then it happened but uh, it was the most beautiful marriage uh because for the food we had mcdonald's because that was the only thing we could order in yeah. at the court ceremony the decorations were um, a red banner from someone else's uh background that we stole for a bit and uh, there was a lot of question and answer because i didn't know in a proper court setup they ask you questions mm-hmm. so it almost felt like coffee with karan at that moment and then while they say you know okay yes you are happily married and everything we were actually signing a lot of papers so it almost felt like you know signing a contract but it was the most beautiful thing that happened because you know by the end of it we were chuckling we were actually finding new things and we had our i mean i had my brother he had his brothers and we were laughing about how things were happening and it happened so smoothly yeah. and i remember distinctly it was um, raining that day and we went outside and i just looked at him and i said wow we are married and he's like well the sky is uh, you know witness to that and we went to this weird thela there and we had a uh, bhutta together and we were so happy and he was like listen ideally we were supposed to do that picture you know where you feeding each other so we did that in fact the interesting thing was also when we were going to the court mm-hmm. he was being driven by my brother and i was dr- being driven by another cousin of mine and there came a small patch where i couldn't reach him his phone was not reachable yeah. and i thought uh, you know my husband or going to be husband ran away and i was like finally it hit him but then well he was standing standing there so yeah it was it was very interesting and after that we had a proper you know celebration sort of and do you have any advice for people who might be like going through a rough phase in their relationship don't listen to people when they say it's okay it happens mm-hmm. no 
even if it happens it's not supposed to happen the moment you feel this is not okay or the slightest inclination you get that something is not okay and something's not fine that's actually your heart trying to talk to you please listen be honest to yourself love yourself don't let it come to a point that your body uh, your senses your mind has to tell you that it's not working for you be your own battle woman or battle man be your own soldier having said that it's never the person it's yeah. always the situation so part in the most amazing way you could so that tomorrow you know when you meet you still smile at each other because at the end of the day you want to cherish the good memories and try to erase the bad ones and move on we all fall from that bicycle once in a while we don't stop you know riding again or we fall when we're learning how to walk we don't stop walking again please give love as many chances as you can thank you kushbu i just love that there's no hatred or there's no like blame game uh when you talk about your ex it's just two right people met at the wrong time or the situations weren't right i'm sure you have learned a lot from this video so bollywood and social media paint this rosy picture that your relationship has to be perfect you meet your soulmate and everything is just problem free everything is just effortless but i think it's about finding the right person and even a court marriage with mcdonald's can be perfect because in the end it's about the marriage and not about the wedding If you enjoyed the video please like and share and subscribe to Verona for more such content Verona matchmaking reimagine